Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the midweek Bible study of the Center Beach Bible Church. I want to do things a little different tonight. Um, we're going to be really in Revelation chapter 12. I keep, I've been saying that forever. Uh, this is part 47 of our tomorrow's newspaper today uh, series. We're up to, yeah, 47 weeks we've been in this study. We're up to chapter 12. Uh, also, I want to start, because uh, uh, I, I know we have a lot of people who follow us online. And wherever you are in the country, and I know I, I get this question a lot. When people move away or they leave the church or they're someplace else, uh, they always saying, you know, I can't find the church, I can't find a good church, and I try to find one for them. But there's actually a database you can go to that I highly recommend. And if you go online to Rock Harbor Church in California, they're a remnant believer church, and they have a church finder database where you put in the state you live in, and they will find you a eschatology, believing, doctrinal, what we do here type church, okay? And uh, they'll find you a good church. And uh, I'm honored that we are on that list. And uh, they actually tracked us down, and they did a lot of research, and they're constantly looking state from state, trying to find good churches uh, for people in different areas and telling them this is where you, and if you got to drive, Hey man, we'll, we'll drive hours to go to a good restaurant or a movie or a concert, right? If you got to drive somewhere, I mean, I know we got friends here. You guys drive far. Okay. If, if you know the words being taught, okay, let's put some effort in there. Go drive, you know, well, it's not around the corner. So go, it's important. So anyway, uh, I'm going to be saying that a lot, Rock Harbor Church, and we'll show you that link. Uh, so tonight we're going to show you a couple of things. Uh, we're going to show you news, okay? Uh, and uh, we're also going to show you uh, earthquakes. Did, uh, I'm going to thank uh, Brother Jeep John here uh, for uh, doing some earthquake research because it's really, really fascinating. And we can get that fire back up again, Jake. Um, there is... Uh, a massive, it, once you see it, and John put a lot of effort into this, you know, Jesus said in Matthew 24, you know, when the apostles asked him, how do we know when we're getting there? Okay, everything that's going on today, <laughs> we're there. And, and he goes, and one of the things is earthquakes in diverse places. An uptick like we've never seen, not just some sporadic things, but earthquakes. I mean, we've been having earthquakes in New York. Okay, very unusual places. So uh, let's see if we can pull that up and uh, see how our earthquake. So this is our first, first chart here. So we can see 1980, okay, and we can see uh, magnitude 3 plus, so magnitude 3, 4, and 3, 5 is the, the starter line here, John, right? Yeah, so you can see the uptick, okay, where we are. Right, that's 2020, okay? So that's as far as we go. Slide that down. What's most interesting also about this, though, is that you can see, <clears throat> I'm sorry, you can, um, you can see that the bottom line there, the earthquake is intensity. Okay. Big increase. Okay. No, and that's, and don't forget, Jesus said, and pestilence, meaning worldwide plagues and sicknesses. Okay. And uh, I think what happened in 2020 qualifies as that. Okay. So, uh, so go back up there, Jake. Did we skip something? Uh, was this the next one? Okay. So uh, I should probably have you. <laughs> uh, Explain this, John. What do we have here? So this, okay, this is the past 90 days. Okay, nobody can hear John. Come on up here, John. You're going to have to come up here. Okay. Okay, come over here. So what you see here, what you see here is a 10-year history of earthquakes. And basically what, what, uh, what I did here is I just broke it down between, so you see M2, M2+, plus, and so on, this magnitudes. And then you can see from, and I, I apologize the way that um, the first three up there, 
<clears throat> came out yellow. It really shouldn't. It was, that's really, uh, really should be black. I don't know why it's like that. But then you can see the past 90 days, 365, three years, and then the past 10 years. And you can see that there's an, up, that there's an uptick in earthquake activity. What you really see is there's an uptick in the, in the power of the earthquakes. And as you go through um, some more of the slides, I, I'm not really sure what Pastor is going to go through. I sent him a whole bunch of information. Okay, so I told him go to the next slide, Jake. Okay. okay, so this is what you see just in the past seven days. Um, and you can see that we've actually had one earthquake at a seven or higher, <clears throat> one six or higher, 25, uh, 20 earthquakes, five plus or higher. So what I really take a look at, and I follow earthquakes actually all day long, just to I don't know. I have a sickness, I guess. You could get an app for that if <laughs> I, you want. I have an app for it. Um, but what I really focus on is I, I focus on five, six, and seven, but anything that's um, higher than that. So you can see four to five, there's 243. Really, at four between five is really not that much to sneeze about. It kind of, um, but it's more that, that you see that they're more frequent, that's happening more frequently. But now you're starting to see that five and higher is starting to get more and more and more. I hope that makes sense. Okay, go to, I think there's another one, another slide. Yeah, and then I just do, I did the past 30 days, 90 days, then year, and I think I did 10 years okay, or something like that. Slide. Is that it? Yeah, so this is the past three years. So you can see that we've just had one, um, we've just had one in the past seven days with a magnitude seven plus. In three years, we've only had 52. So you can see that the, the size and the, um, the power is starting to increase. Next slide. Is that three million earthquakes? That is three million. Three million. That's the past ten years. In the past ten years. In the past ten years. Yes. Eight quakes, uh, eight plus or higher. Okay, this is around the world, right? This is around the world. <coughs> and you want to add to that? There might be one more slide. Might be one more slide, no, uh, Jake. Okay. Yeah. okay, so then I just added this slide. Uh, the top really says 2024. The reason why I added this is, so for all of 23, um, <clears throat> there have been 92,000 altogether. So this is every magnitude, right? Um, 92,295, it looks like. And that was for 23. Here, we're not even, so I guess this data is probably halfway through 2024, and we're already at 60,000. So we're on an incredible pace to go a lot higher. And if you go past all the years, it's just up, 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 and up. And if you, if you want to, just for, just for giggles, if you want to just Google why is there um, an, uptick, an uptick in earthquake activity, earthquake, earthquake activity, they'll give you a, a bunch of scientific reasons obviously, which makes sense to the, um, I guess, to the eye that's not paying attention, if that makes sense. So, that. Okay. Great. Thank you so much, John, for doing that. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jake, let's go to our news feed. And I'm going to be focusing on uh, a lot of Israel stuff. This is going to be a special Israel night special because chapter 12 is all about Israel. It's very important. But... Here are some things that are going on uh, August 13th and August 14th, 2024. Uh, let's see here. UK, that's United Kingdom, police chief threatens to jail Americans over online posts. Um, the uh, United Kingdom officials will not only target British citizens for sharing content and commentary pertaining to the violent riots and clashes between. You have to understand what's happening in, in the United Kingdom. Okay, what's happening all over the world? Civil war and, and clashing and riots. And they're trying to say, keep it quiet. Don't say anything. Okay, sharing content and commentary pertaining to the violent riots and clashes between protesters and counter protesters, but that officials will also toggle, uh, target potentially and uh, potentially extradite and jail American citizens for sharing online content. Okay, in the United Kingdom, what what are they hiding? Okay, uh, go up a little bit. Uh, joint statement: Five nations call on Iran to stand down from the threats against Israel. We're going to talk a lot about, and I mean the 
the order of what's going on is up and down, up and down. They're going to attack. They're not going to attack. Uh, they're ramping up attack. They're backing off of attacking. Because understand, and someone asked me this uh, uh, online, a couple of people did, about you know why is Israel so important? Where does it say these things? Uh, uh, why can't Israel be destroyed? Uh, because they can't. <laughs> because they're protected by God. That's the reason. And there's plenty of scriptures for that. So I know it's looking like, wow, they're ready to attack. But something always seems to be holding back the tide. So let's just go through some of these things. A joint statement. Five nations call on Iran to stand down threats against Israel. The U.S., U.K., France, Germany, and Italy published a joint statement on Monday calling on all sides to de-escalate as Iran and Hezbollah together prepared to attack Israel for Israel, Hamas, uh, for Israel and Hamas to uh, conclude a ceasefire and hostage deal as soon as possible. Because, you know, they're going tit for tat and Israel is going, you could hit us, we're going to hit you harder. We're going to, it's going to get to the point where it's going to be all out annihilation war. But Israel is not going to be annihilated, people. That's the thing. Israel suspends produce imports of Jordan over cholera concern. There's a lot of uh, Legionnaire disease, uh, monkey pox. Have you seen all these new diseases? They're all over the place. There's, there's so many new diseases that are threatening, you know, uh, swine flu, uh, uh, black death. Black death. I just got okay. We just added black death. Sounds like it. What do you got? Ah, I got black death. Yeah, I'm not, not feeling too good. Uh, so, interesting, but biblical, okay? Moving on here, as Iran attack looms, uh, competing U.S.-Russian role surface. As tensions between Israel and the Iranian axis. Now, when we see Iranian axis, that means there's not just Iran. We have multiple nations that are surrounding this little New Jersey-sized country, that for some reason, we'll find out tonight, the world hates so much. And do you think that Israel is the most evilest nation in the world? I could think about way more nations that are way more evil. But they hate Israel. Why? Okay, so uh, as tensions between Israel and, our, and Iran uh, access Mountain Middle East, the United States and Russia are playing increasingly prominent and competing roles in the region. Russia's dependence on Iran has significantly intensified in light of its ongoing war against Ukraine, which it, ha uh, which it appears to have recently uh, rapid repaid by helping the Islamic Republic increase its readiness for further direct conflict with Israel. So Russia's going, you help us with, with uh, uh, Ukraine, thank you, and we'll help you with your attacks on Israel. And not to mention China and North Korea, who's helping Russia with their attacks on uh, on Ukraine. And they're all changing military equipment and helping one another. Uh, move up there a little more, Jake. That's it? And move, move, move any more? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, you're one step ahead of me. Okay, Austin orders guided missile submarine to Middle East region. Israeli Defense Minister uh, spoke with U.S. Uh, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin on Sunday and told him that the ongoing Islamic Revolution uh, Guard Corps uh, preparations against Tehran is ready for another large-scale attack and said source, uh, a source with knowledge of the call. During the call with Gallant, Austin reiterated Washington's pledge to take every possible step to defend Israel, a Pentagon readout stated. Now that's interesting because it seems like a conflicting thing. We hate Israel because everyone who's run in, all the politicians from a certain thing, hate Israel, anti-Israel, yet we're going to stick with you, Israel, but we don't really stick with them. We make these gestures where we say we're sending support, but will we really actually get into the battle? I think it's just all smoke and mirrors to look like we support them, John. Or are we protecting our own assets? Or protecting our own assets. I don't think we have anything to do about caring about Israel. Uh, the, the election coming up in November 
Israel is going to play a, a prominent role. Where do you stand with Israel? And if our nation completely 100% bails on Israel, that's the end of the United States. I'm just telling you because that's what the Bible says. So watch, you know, you can vote for whoever you want to, but to me, the most important thing is where they stand on Israel. Because it's, you know, it's, it's sad when people vote, you know, we vote so selfishly. We always vote. I remember when I was in the union, you have to vote for the candidate who's good for union. He could be bad for, or she could be bad for every part of the country. But as long as he's good for you, if you're a senior, you vote for this candidate because they'll be good for you. Okay, for seniors. So everybody votes for what's good for them. Well, what about voting for what's good for the United States of America? And I'm telling you, the best thing you could do is vote for the candidate who pledges undetered support for Israel. You get a candidate who says, Israel, you're on your own. End of the United States. It's biblical. It's scripture. It's just what it is. Just so you know that, people. Okay. Uh, Israel, uh, okay, it, uh, Iran, Hezbollah now expected to attack jointly within days. A revised Israeli intelligence assessment suggests that Iran is slated to launch an assault on the Jewish state within days in a joint attack with its Lebanese Hezbollah proxy. Okay, and these things go back and forth. Uh, fearing Iranian attacks, the in, uh, Israeli Defense Force, IDF, orders all soldiers to leave Georgia and Azerbaijan. And, and that's not down south Georgia. That's, okay, let's read this here. Uh, all regular IDF soldiers who are staying in these countries are required to return to Israel immediately. So what is the nation saying? Something big is coming. All of our soldiers, wherever you are, get home. We're going to need everyone here. It's major, people. It's major. TikTok, you know, all these little... AI and these computer things that our young people are just zombies to, they're so demonic and they're so bad. TikTok, the ticking time bomb of communist China's influence on the West. TikTok comes from China, okay? They're the instigators, okay? And I just had a little thing here. It was a it was essentially built for that purpose. In a recent episode of the show Eyes on Israel, Host Rabbi Whatever interviewed tech entrepreneur Brian Costello about the role of popular social media app TikTok in shaping public opinion on the ongoing Israeli Palestinian conflict, especially among the younger generation. It's propaganda. They are getting fed Israel bad, Palestine good, okay? And Look at all the young people. All of a sudden, they are so pro-Palestine. Palestine, they're like the salt of the earth. Israel is Satan. Well, Islam calls Satan, I mean, calls Israel the great Satan, and we're the little Satan next to them. Okay? Is the UK government orchestrating the counter-protest to what they label far-right and fascist? Recent anti-fascist protests have been presented as an organic up rising of the British working class. A coast inspection shows this not to be the, class, uh, the case. Uh, and these are some earthquakes. We don't need to go through them because we just went through earthquakes, tropical storms, earthquakes, keep going. Uh, oh boy, let's not forget about uh, the Olympics. I hope you're not watching the Olympics. Every time the Olympic things come up. I'm having this great joy. I know it doesn't matter, but every time it comes up on my YouTube feed, I protest. If you could, you could click on something, say, I want to protest against this, against this link. Lies offensive to me. Okay. Maybe if everyone did it, they would stop doing it. But remember how they started the Olympics? Well, Lucifer appears in the Olympic ritual 2024. You won't believe this mega ritual that took place at the closing ceremony of the Olympics 2024 in Paris. The satanic ritual showed the arrival of the Antichrist descending from the sky to destroy the world. He then calls up the armies of the underworld to rebuild a new age. There are also some interesting parallels to Revelation 9, 1 through 12. Why, what does Satan and the, the 
demonic stuff have to do with the Olympics? Why are they even there? Why are all these shows and these performances so wicked? By the way, remember we I, I told you last week about that demonic circus? Well, somebody told me they got some inside information. They heard from somebody who went to it. Remember, I, I was praying. I said, Lord, somehow shut that thing down. Well, you know, it was the hottest weekend, and they had no air conditioning and no fans. It was so hot that people had to leave. Yeah. Almost as hot as hell, okay? <laughs> so uh, praise God, because uh, somebody, matter of fact, it was Charlene uh, told me that she was in the bathroom somewhere. She heard some girl talking about, she goes, oh, did you go to that thing by the thing? You know, the, that psycho circus? She goes, yeah, we had to leave. It was so hot. There was no air conditioning, no fans. We all left. And so when Charlene said, yeah, like, hot as hell? <laughs> hot as hell. Okay. Uh, Delta's top DEI. Have you seen this term, DEI? Okay. This is an important thing. Don't be for it. Be against it. Okay. DEI is, um, uh, let me see. Yeah. Where is it here? What do I have it here? Uh, next line. Um, Okay, diversity, equity, and in inclusion. Okay, that's what that stands for. And they want that in every facet of your life. Okay, so Delta's top DEI officer uh, says, no more saying, ladies and gentlemen, get ready to board the flight. Why? Uh, because it's an offense to other people who aren't ladies and gentlemen. It's not inclusive. Well, what if I'm a monkey? What if I identify as a fish? So you can't, they want to push it. You can't say ladies and gentlemen. Now, why is that a biblical thing? Because that which is right will appear to be wrong, and that which is wrong will appear to be right. And what God has set as this is the way things is. In the beginning, God made humans how? Male and female. End of story. Why is this push to change that? It's demonic, people. It is the spirit of Antichrist. Travel trends deteriorating as consumer downturn worsens. Just remember the economy, people. Also part of what the Bible says in the future. Hard monetary times, okay? And the world is feeling it, okay? Recession risks are mounting as the labor market cools. Airlines, hotels short-term rental platforms, and even theme parks. Disney, oh, I feel so bad for them. Uh, and even uh, theme parks are sounding the alarm bells about a consumer downturn. Evidence of consumer slowdown is widespread. People got no money. Okay, this great utopian world they're building is making us poor. Okay? Um, okay, and that's, uh, where are we here? Okay. Uh, Israel says Iran posed for major retaliation. The uh, U.S. deploys sub hurries, uh, hurries carrier group, Netanyahu to comment, uh, to, to his cabinet. That's the president of Israel. These are fateful days. Don't publicly discuss security matters. So remember like during World War II, it was like, uh, uh, what was that sl slogan? Uh, loose lips sink, sink ships. Okay. In Israel, no talking about what we're doing. Okay, we are on a battle for life and death. Serious over there, people. Serious. Um, okay, uh, a retail apocalypse. Did I read this already? Uh, oh, yeah. You might have already seen this happening. A retail apocalypse is gaining momentum all over America. Is your favorite chain closing stores? Why are retailers closing thousands of stores if the U.S. economy is in the best shape ever? Of course, the truth is that the U.S. economy is not in good shape at all. The cost of living crisis is absolutely crushing working families all over the nation. Just got a text from my a good friend. He's on vacation in North Carolina. He goes, Pastor Scott, I'm thinking about getting out, man. I can't afford it. How many people have left this church? What? Well, excuse me, I can't hear you. That's, that's North Carolina. They're, and they're just running there, okay? Uh, why are retailers going to, uh, uh, 
Okay, the cost of living crisis is absolutely crushing working families over the nation, and U.S. consumers simply don't have as much discretionary income as they once did. Okay, and the last thing is that we are really living in the end times. I believe it. Believe it with all my heart. Because it's true. Jesus says, these are the last days. Is it possible that Jesus specifically warned us about the times that we're living in nearly 2,000 years ago? You may have noticed that global events have started to spiral out of control lately. Normally, and this is interesting and it's true, normally the summer is a period when things are relatively quiet. It's like the whole world takes a break. It's summer, we all chill out, okay? As far as the news industry is concerned, August is supposed to be the quietest month of all because so much of the world is on vacation. But well, that definitely has not been the case in 2024. Can you imagine what September will be like? What October will be like? And I told I have a, I know someone who's uh, thinking about traveling out of the country in November. I said, don't go. I wouldn't leave Center Reach in November. Stay in your homes, okay? And get on your knees and pray until hopefully something passes by. Okay, like the Passover. Don't be going out. You might not get back into the country. They could shut down everything. Okay, what? And I, yeah, and I'm not exaggerating, people. And I know you think I'm a gloom and doomer. No, and I'm going to prove to you why I got good news for you tonight. So that's it right now, right, Jake? So I'm going to do this. Uh, you can shut that off. Uh, that we're going to wait until after, okay? Right before the uh, last... Uh, before the last song. So I'm going to do this old school and instead of doing the PowerPoint and put these lights back on because I didn't have a chance to put my PowerPoint together, I'm going to do this the way I used to do it, just reading notes. So Revelation chapter 12 and this is going to be special and this is going to be all about Israel. Revelation chapter 12 is all about Israel and where are we here? We're in the second part of of the tribulation, the second three, three and a half years. And it's interesting, these scriptures here talk about God's love and his promises to those he loves. God loves Israel, and if you're a child of God through faith in Jesus Christ, he loves you. So we have some very cryptic scriptures here that so many people misconstrue. They're very cryptic. But there are answers, okay? So Revelation chapter 1. Let's, let's hit this. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Okay. So now we have symbolism. But this is, actually isn't a woman with a crown with 12 stars. Now, if you're watching online here, it's important that you get your Bible out, follow along with your Bible. So chapter 12 begins a review and a recap of Israel's history and her future. Interesting what God does here. He's going to be dealing with Israel in the tribulation. Okay, someone asked me what the time of Jacob's trouble meant when I mentioned that. And it's the tribulation, and I will show you where that is. Uh, so this is a review in chapter 12. God does a review. The book of Revelation is very interesting. It has like little parentheses. It goes backwards. It goes forwards. It shows you little glimpses of certain time periods. It recaps events that are happening, that have happened, that will happen. So what we see here is the age-old battle between God and Satan. At the end of the day, people, everything you see today Forget about politics left, right. It's between God and Satan. End of story. The gloves are off. The masks have been lifted up. We know what it is. Okay? It's between good and evil, between mankind and, and God. It also shows the coming together of God's plan for Israel at the end. And he promised her. God makes promises. And one of the things that I've taught in the past, and hopefully you'll remember, there are two types of promises that God makes. Do you know what they are? Conditional and unconditional. Okay? 
what's a, well, we'll use an example like with our children, okay? Let's say you make a promise to your ta- a child, little Johnny, if you clean your room, I will get you ice cream, okay? That is a conditional promise. If you don't clean your room, you don't get ice cream, okay? A, a unconditional promise is no matter if you clean your room or you don't clean your room, you get an ice cream. There's no conditions, okay? God's love for us is unconditional, okay? So God has made promises to Israel. And keep in mind, not every church is on the same page here, but if you're a remnant Bible-believing church, you have to, people like, what's up with all the Israeli Jewish stuff? People think we're crazy. I've had pastors think I'm nuts for what we do here. And I say, well, we do it not because it's popular. It's certainly not safe. It's certainly not bringing in the masses of people, but it's what God wants us to do. And if there be nobody here, then so be it. It's still the word of God. I will bless those that bless Israel, and I will curse those who curse Israel. Right? Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Those who love her will prosper. That's good enough for me. If that's what God says to do, I'll do it. If I'm going to get killed for that, well then, so be it. Okay, I get the martyred crown. It's really nice. Got gold things on it. Okay. So this shows God's plan for Israel. That even though right now he's not dealing with her, okay, his promises that are unconditional still remain. Okay. So God has promises for Israel and he has promises for us. Okay. They cannot be changed. So let's read Verse 1, and we're going to go to verse uh, 6, and then, let me see if I got this right here, okay. Um, 2, okay. okay. Okay, Revelation, let's read it, and then go back. So, uh, chapter 12, verse 1, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, S-U-N, not S-O-N, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, not drawing, but captured and pulled away. And did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered. As it's like a a woman is ready to be delivered, and there's a dragon waiting to eat the baby as it comes out. For to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule the nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. So what do we have here, okay? Well, we have a great wonder, okay, in heaven here. Uh, this, this great sign of a woman clothed with the sun, okay? Now, who do some people think this is? Okay. Who is the woman? Israel. Okay, and you're going to see many people think it's Mary. Okay, it's not Mary. Okay, the woman is is Israel. Okay, the great sign of a woman clothed with the sun is the nation of Israel. She is seen as Joseph from the Old Testament saw her in a vision, Genesis 37, 9 through 10. Two interesting points here. Israel is compared to a married woman in the Old Testament. The church is compared to a virgin engaged to the groom, 2 Corinthians 11.2. We are the bride waiting for the marriage supper. Verse 2 says, And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Next point. Israel, the woman, brings forth a man-child who will rule the nations with a rod of iron. That's Jesus Christ, Isaiah 9, 6 and 7, Psalm 2. 
It is the remnant of Israel that is left here. Now remember, this is taking place during the tribulation, uh, and we're doing some flashbacks, but God is dealing with Israel. So the remnant of Israel is left here. That is persecuted by the Antichrist, not the church, as the church has been removed. So in a future date, when the church is removed, we have the seven years of tribulation called the time of Jacob's trouble. Remember, Jacob the patriarch, his name was changed to what? Israel. God says, I will no, call, no longer call you Jacob. I will call you Israel. Okay, and sometimes when you read the scriptures, in, in some verses it'll say Jacob, some it'll say Israel, but they're the same. Okay, so God promised Israel many years ago, and we read that in the book of Daniel, okay, a certain amount of time. They have seven years God owes them, and God keeps his promises. If he owes you seven years. So God is starts to work again with Israel during the tribulation. The tribulation is more about Israel than anything else. Okay, that's the major thing: getting the Jews to see that Jesus Yeshua Hamashiach is the Messiah. Okay, the man child. Okay, Satan tries to devour is Christ the chosen child of Israel, who one day will rule over all nations with a rod of iron. Acts 1, 9-11. Satan has tried to destroy Christ from day one. That's what he does every day. He hates Jesus Christ. He's been trying all through history. And, and there's that little uh, interesting thing about the three H's. The three major men who tried to destroy the bloodline of Jesus Christ. Herod, Haman, or Haman, Herod, and Hitler, right? The three, three H's. What was the thing with Hitler, and what did that have to do with World War II? He probably, if he, if he would have forgot his hatred of the Jews and, and stopped investing so much in these camps and just annihilating a whole race of people, that's called the genocide, he probably would have done better. He was obsessed. He didn't just not like them. He wanted them eradicated from the face that there would not be one living Jew on the whole planet. Why? Don't people see the biblical connections to these things? And a great study is to look up Hitler and his fascination with the occult and who he got information from, okay? And how he was ultra naturally spared many he was blinded once then he regained his sight he was almost killed and and he met this this uh woman a gypsy who had this root who told hitler about all these things if you notice people who are i believe hitler in the beginning was indwelt by demonic forces that's why in the beginning he was really brilliant okay you have testimonies of people when he would, when he would be standing and you would get to shake his hand in a line, they, they, they called, uh, it was like the, uh, evil personified. It was the dark charisma of Hitler that people would just be in his presence and be like, whoa. He was brilliant. He turned the nation up. The nation was in poverty. There was, there was crime. There was, there was poorness. He raised them up, and he was like a god. They loved him. He was at the Olympics. He sat with our people. We thought he was a great guy. But what happens when Satan pulls away from you? The real Hitler comes out, ends up killing yourself. You end up killing yourself. That's what happens to stars and, and celebrities who give their lives to Satan. I will make you a king. You'll be the best singer, the best star. They do it. And some of them are not shy about saying it. And then what do they lose in return? Their soul. They end up dying of a horrible disease or committing suicide. It's normally what happens. Satan, I mean, uh, Hitler, horrible suicide in a bunker all over. Okay. Okay. Moving on here. Verse three. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, 
seven crowns and seven crowns upon his heads. So who is this red dragon? It's Satan. The color red is the color of blood. He was a murderer from the beginning. Remember, Jesus calls him that in John 8, 44. And he has no truth in him. He is a liar and the father of lies. I believe Satan is part of the media because the media is a great deceptive tool. It is all now deception. You have no idea what's real. And we don't even know if you're even looking at a real person talking because now they have artificial intelligence. You don't even know if this politician really said this or that. Who is the father of deception? He is the chief, the chief propagandist is Satan. It's what he does and he's good at it. Remember Hitler had his propaganda czar Goebbels? Was it Goebbels? It was Goebbels, okay? Okay, now moving on. Verse 4, and his tail, Satan's tail, he doesn't have a tail. This is speaking metaphorically. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, Israel, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Okay, so what's going on here? The third of the stars are a third of the angels. Okay, remember in Genesis, St. Lucifer convinces a third of the angels, come with me. We don't got to follow this guy. We can be gods. Okay, and where do those angels go? They're cast out. They're cast down to the earth. Okay. So he took them and he cast them out of heaven and he led astray these angels. Satan at this point is finally expelled from heaven, yet he is now in our present and past time, yet he has access to it. Uh, Job 1 verses 1 chapter 2 through 8. Now keep in mind, this is a, an interesting thing. Satan lost his position in heaven as most precious cherub, Lucifer. But he didn't lose access to it. Now, what would be an example? Every president who's ever been a president, when you're not president anymore, you still have clearance to go to the White House. So Satan never lost his clearance because you know where people think Satan right now is in hell? He's not. He's actually in heaven, okay? Or walking about the earth, seeking whom he made the vow. But when he's in heaven, he talks to God. And he accuses us to God. Oh, you're, you're Christian down there. Did you see what they did? Did you see? Oh, did you see what they're doing? Okay. And yes. Job is an example. Yes. Job, that's exactly what's happening. That's what Satan, because it says that there was a time when Satan stood before God in heaven. And he said, oh, you know, your, your people follow you because you take care of them. And you know what? The world today, the church today has took up on that. And that's true. The, so many pastors sell that you follow God and he'll take care of you. That's never God's plan. God said, they will follow me and love me even if I do nothing for them. Because that's a true believer. And that's what the whole story of Job was about. Okay, Satan is convinced that because he looks around the Christians and go, hey, man, you give them wealth, health and everything. They will follow you, but they don't love you. They use you, God. And you're a fool, God, because no one loves you. Okay, God says, yes, there are a few. There are a few that love me, really love me. Okay, so what's going on here? So Satan tried to destroy the, uh, the Christ child. Uh, Matthew 2, 16 to 18. Uh, then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, with ex was exceedingly wroth, and he sent forth and slew all the children that were born in Bethlehem and in all the coast thereof from two years old and under. Can you imagine that? Going from house to house, dragging your two-year-old son, child, and younger, and killing them with the sword right in front of the mothers, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Okay, why? Because they, he, Herod was afraid 
that the Messiah was going to be born and I'm going to stop it. I'm sure he was inspired by Satan. Today, Satan is the prince and power of the air. Ephesians 2.2 2, and also called the God of this world. Did you know that? Lowercase g. 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Let's read them. Ephesians 2.2. 2, Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world. Speaking to believers. According to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. I would add there to the prince of the power of the airwaves. Okay? Because who controls the airwaves? Who controls a lot of things you don't understand? Whenever there's storms and horrible things, who gets blamed? God. Who, who really does those storms? Satan. When Satan wanted to turn God, uh, Job against God, who who caused the hurricane? God? No. Satan destroyed everything that Job had with the hurricane. Satan does it. More proof, 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, in whom the God of this world, we think that's God. No, lowercase g. The governor of this world has blinded the minds of them which don't believe. Do you see the world today? Their minds are blinded. They cannot see any of this, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine in them. He could, if they would accept it. Okay, next, when Satan is cast out of heaven, the heaven rejoices because the accuser is cast down. The dragon, Satan, is now filled with great wrath because he knows he has a short time. Three and a half years. So in the second three and a half years of the tribulation, Satan is fully on earth and he has been waiting for this day for thousands of years because he's going to get what he wants for a little bit. And boy, if you have, if you don't feed an animal and you keep them outside in a cage, right? You want to train them to be killers? Don't feed them. Just dangle meat over to them. He is thirsting for blood. He's thirsting for revenge. He's thirsting for his time. Okay? After he was chained, and, and so he has this uh, short time, three and a half years, after the tribulation, Satan is going to be chained, bound for a thousand years. That's the millennial reign. And then even after that, he's released again. It's interesting. But, uh, so let's continue on in... Uh, we're on five. Thank you. See, I, I need you guys to help me. Okay, verse five. And she brought forth a man child. I have my notes backwards here. That's why. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne, a great wonder in heaven. Again, this is not Mary who delivers his child, but Israel. Okay. How do we know that? Verse 6, and the woman fled into the wilderness. The reason why I'm pointing this out, because there are some people from some denominations who insist that Mary is this super being. She is the, she is the mother of God. She is above God. She's above Jesus. She controls. She's the queen of heaven. No, Mary is nothing but a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. She even said, I'm a sinner. Jesus is my savior. You, it's interesting, when you read the Bible, there is so little spoken about Mary. Hardly anything. There might be like three scriptures that even mention her. Yet a whole theology of people who worship her. And the reason why I want to point this out, because verse 6 makes it clear, it's not Mary. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. When did that ever happen to Mary? Okay. During this time, Satan's wrath will be upon Israel and the mother and the mother of the Christ child. This destruction of Jews will be worse than the Holocaust. Okay. Isn't it funny how people just are so obsessed on denying that the Holocaust ever happened. The Palestinians, oh, it's all made up. 
Never, ha never happened. It, we have the evidence. We have the buildings. We have uh, Auschwitz. We have... Nope, never happened. It's made up, fabricated. Jews never had any persecution. Never killed. Okay? It's lies. Okay? The Hebrew prophets foretold this time of tribulation and distress for the Jews, or the time of Jacob's trouble. Leviticus 26, verses 40 through 50, Deuteronomy 30, 1 through 5, Isaiah 11, 10 through 16, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 23, 3 through 8. Yet God will supernaturally take care of the woman, Israel, like he fed her in the wilderness in the past. Question, has God taken care of Israel in the past? Yes. Okay. Has God loved her even when she didn't love him? Yes. Okay. Then God will do the same for you. Does God love us even when we don't follow him? Even when we let him down? Yes. If you're a child of God through faith in Jesus Christ, even when we stray, and Israel is the example of the prodigal child. Okay. Yet, God loves us with an everlasting love. So for the world, it's not surprising that the world loathes Israel. Anti-Semitism has never been worse than it is now. Never. It's worldwide. And people don't even know why. I don't know. I hate them. I hate the Jews. Let's kill them. No, we don't want to just get rid of them. We want them dead. We want them gone. And, and we'll clap and say, it's a good thing. Because they're no good. Remember, remember, Hitler called them pigs. Subhuman species, not fit to be. And neighbors would turn in their neighbors. They were best friends. This is the, you know, Joel the shoemaker. Next thing you know, they're dragging him into the streets and killing him right there. How do people get so brainwashed? The spirit of Antichrist. How many people in the news? Do you see many reports in the news of people standing for Israel? No. What do you see? Palestinian pal, flag, Palestinian flags, Palestinian flags, Palestine. Or oh, all the young people, Palestine, Palestine, Palestine. You know, from the from the you know from the sea to the sea. From the what do they say? From the what? From the river to the sea. Well, you know who belongs to the river to the sea? Israel's property, not their property. Israel has already lost so much. They got a little speck they live on. And that's not, a, they can't even have that. Okay. Verse 7, and there was war in heaven. This is really fascinating. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels. Now we could assume here that this might be the second heaven. I don't think this is the the throne room of God in the heavenly realms, e Ephesians 6.12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness in high places. I could be wrong. I don't think God would put up with a battle in his throne room. So we have Michael and the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels. So we have a real battle between Satan and his angels and Michael. Now, this is a battle like nothing else. A war in heaven between Michael and Satan. Keep in mind, both of them are angels. Okay? Michael's an angel. Don't forget, Satan is an angel. Okay? He's a fallen angel. And he has all the power. Some people believe that Michael is the replacement for Lucifer. I don't think so. Because he's not powerful enough. God made Lucifer the most precious cherub. And he's not ah like this. He is the most beautiful creature that God ever created. He comes on as an angel of light. He sings his vocal cords are very charismatic. He's musical. Some people believe he is the first worship leader. I, I've heard that. I don't know if we can prove that. Okay. He used the music that God made for good, for evil. Okay. And demons will be fighting too. So let's move on here. And we're going to go a little bit long because I, I really want to finish this up. So here's the good news. So what happens with this war? Verse 8, and prevailed not. Satan and his angels didn't win. Neither was there a place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives, deceiveth the whole world. 
He was cast into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. That old serpent refers to Satan in the garden, Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. He began to deceive the world right from the start. He is no longer allowed access to the throne room of God after this battle. And number 10, and I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, now has come salvation, strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ, and the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before God day and night. He accuses us before God day and night. Meaning Satan can no longer accuse us day and night. He is finally gone. Verse 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. During the tribulation, many will be killed for the name of Christ because their lives mean nothing to them. Jesus is everything. You want to kill me? Kill me. I follow Christ. Those will be tribulation saints. They would rather die than serve Satan because their lives here mean nothing. And what we're going to do, because I don't want to, there's actually a lot more here than I thought. What we're going to do is let's uh, keep this going next week. But I want to show you uh, we're going to end with a song, but I want to show you a video clip that to me is the most powerful thing about the persecution of the Jews past and the persecution future and the term never again, never again. And I've sent this to people. People are afraid to show this. I don't care. I'm going to show it. It'll probably, you know, it gets every time I go to play this, when you play this, Jake, a little thing's going to come up. Uh, uh, blocked and you have to because it's too graphic to show anybody you have to hit that it's okay okay check this out and watch the segue people
Our heads, Father in heaven, Lord, this the as we close out, uh, make clear, Father, that uh, you died, Lord, for all people, Lord. You love all people Palestinian, Islamic, Jewish, Gentile, Buddhist, black, white, yellow, yellow, green, pink, no matter what they are, you love everyone. Or you says that God so loved the world. So we don't, we're not pointing out that we hate this person or that person. We're just saying we, there should be hate for no one, not no peoples, no race, no, no, uh, uh, no gender, Lord. Uh, you love the world and you gave your son to save us all from this hatred. And your people, Israel, were called for a mission, the chosen people, to bring the gospel out and they messed up, Lord, uh, but you'd never stop loving them. And you raised up the church and uh, uh, and we're uh, doing the best we can. May we do more. But may we stand up without fear, Lord, because fear silence, silences the truth. When we fear for our lives, when we fear uh, retribution, we keep our mouths shut. That's what happened in Nazi Germany. That's what's happening in our world. We must stand up and say, I, I don't fear death. As a Christian, we fear nothing. And I will stand and we must stand for the truth that God loves all people and he's come to save all people from themselves, from the evil that lurks in all of us. And uh, Father, let us be wise and our eyes open to all that's going around us and, and lean on the side of Jesus Christ, the savior of the world, in whose name we pray, amen. Thank you.